Hi, I'm Mike Sintolo, Chief Analyst of Cabot Growth Investor and Cabot Top 10 Trader. I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review on Friday, um, mid-Friday morning on January 5th. Happy New Year to everybody. So yeah, so far this week, it's only been three and a quarter days or whatever as I record this, but it's been a pretty bad start to the week. Um, major indexes are down kind of like 1% to 3%, depending where you're looking. Um, if you look at more at the glamour growth stuff like ARC and IPO, we'll take a look at those, even like the IBD 50. Um, those are kind of down three and a half to six, sometimes even seven percent on the week so far. I mean, so far today we're bouncing, so we'll see how it goes. So, of course, the question and then it's early January and I talked about how there's a lot of cross current. So the question is, you know, what what's the deal? What does it mean? Does it mean anything? So on and so forth. So here are my thoughts. First of all, intermediate term evidence, which is my main focus, it hasn't changed. The trend of the indexes are up. The trend of just about everything is still up. Now, maybe that means we, we have to do some more selling in the short term. You, know, you still have 80 percent of stocks above their 50 day lines, things like that. But, you know, the number of new lows, stuff like that, the hyper overbought readings we had in December, that, that's more of sort of a, you know, three to 12 month look ahead. That's not so much about the next few weeks. Um, but all that stuff, I would just say, you know, is still positive. And anything is possible, of course, but the odds are in favor of, you know, higher prices in the weeks and months ahead. It doesn't guarantee it, but just something to keep in mind. Now, in terms of right now, I think not to sort of put you off into next until next week's video, but I do kind of think it's sort of like, especially for growth stocks, it's like, hey, we've had a lot of these stocks that went from and I'm making this up, but, you know, 48 to 63 and now it went from 63 to 58 or 57 in three or four days, right? So it's a sharp pullback that's a little iffy, but not really abnormal, not breaking the 50 day line, not on massive volume, but also, you know, it gave back quite a, you know, a big chunk of gains pretty quickly, um, you know, kind of thing. So to me, a big thing from here is just, hey, what happens from here? Do we, is, does today's bounce the start of something and the NASDAQ roars back and leading stocks roar back on huge volume? Does today's bounce fail and we end up down and all these things continue to slide next week? I think that's going to be a big case. I think if the market does bounce back, there could be a lot of either follow on entry points or fresh entry points for uh, some of these leading growth stocks, especially. Um, but obviously, if if we don't bounce or if the market bounces and it's led by defensive stocks, which have picked up a little bit this week, stuff like that, well, that would be a little bit more of a yellow flag. Right now, I'm mostly managing, you know, what I have, but also making sure my watch list is fresh too, so that if, you know, this is just sort of the sort of quote unquote normal early January wobbles where we pull back, but then we rebound next week and there's, you know, that sort of thing. And the trend is reestablished that, you know, I'm ready. Okay. And Cabot Growth Investors Model Portfolio, we trimmed one position that did break. Now, if something does break, by the way, I'm not saying ignore that. Okay. If something breaks your, hits your stop, breaks support, whatever it is, yeah, trim or sell or whatever. Um, but I'm just talking about the normal pullbacks. In Cabot Growth Investors Model Portfolio, we did have one stock that broke. We trimmed it. We're about 27% in cash. A week from now, I could see us being you know, 17% in cash, I could see us being 37% in cash, or I could see us being right here in terms of cash level, but maybe we trimmed one or two things over here, but added one or two things that are resilient over here. Again, I'm not trying to put you off and just say who knows, but I think I'm definitely leaning bullish. At the same time, I do think, you know, the rest of today, Friday, and you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week will be key to see if some of these pullbacks do find support, and we kind of rotate back into the leaders or whether, you know, they really can't bounce at all or defensive stocks take the lead, okay? Okay, let's hop in the charts. As usual, I'm using a program called MarketSmith, product of Investors Business Daily. You can learn more at marketsmith.com. And let's just run through, I haven't run through the indexes that much because there wasn't much to say the last month or so. It was like, hey, we're in an uptrend. But now that we've pulled back, let's see where we're at. Okay, again, the NASDAQ, you know, here, thrust, moves to new highs. And again, kind of a sharp pullback, a little bit below. We just used a 25 simple, uh, day simple moving average. Some people use a 21 exponential, whatever. Okay, it's a little bit below that. But, you know, overall, again, just forget the indicators, just stand back and kind of ask your kid, hey, does this look like it's in an uptrend? You'd be like, yeah, it's still, it's still in an uptrend. Okay. Um, same sort of thing with S&P 500. Okay, pulled back, didn't even hit the 25 day line. And the rest of the index is same thing. Some day, actually, the New York composite looks pretty good. I think there's been some rotation into the beaten down stuff. Okay. Um, but you look at like IWM, Russell 2000, sharp pullback, not fun, but to the 25 day line. Again, this is sort of one of these situations where there's a lot of stocks that are somewhat like this, where it's like, 
It's a little iffy. It's not great, but at the same time, it's not totally unexpected. It looks fine in the intermediate, you know, term time frame, I guess is the way I would put it, you know. MDY here, same sort of thing, sharp pullback, 25-day line, maybe starting to find some support. We come in next week, and I don't mean right away, but, you know, in general, next week we're working our way back up to here, looking pretty solid. You know, they try to sell it off and find support. Hey, that's pretty good, you know. We come in next week conversely, and, you know, we do go up here, and then boom, 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 it gaps down 2%. Hey, what the hell's going on? You know, that's obviously going to be a different kettle of fish okay so let's see how it goes but right now clearly intermediate term wise none nothing i mean what's the weakest iwm maybe i mean recently i guess you'd say weakest or the nasdaq i guess is below the 25 day line so we'll call this we'll call the nasdaq the weakest if market smith wants to cooperate yeah but still well above you know the 50 day line by a few hundred points so intermediate term trend is up okay just running through some stuff I've seen. XLP, I wouldn't make too much of it. I mean, it had one up day the first day, then it sold off, whatever. I'm just, it has outperformed the market. This blue line is relative to the S&P 500. It's outperformed the market a little bit of late. I'm not super worried about it, but let's just see what happens. XLV is more, it's not strictly defensive, but it's more big cap safer healthcare sort of thing. XLP is much more my favorite defensive measure, but still, this one's a little bit more, I won't say worrisome, but stronger, obviously break out to new highs, acting better. We'll see what that means uh, going forward. Um, like I said with the IWM, I'm just seeing a lot of stuff like this is XLI. Um, I'm just seeing a lot of stuff like this where it's sort of straight up here, it hit a new high. You know, we had a lot of headlines with um, like, you know, the S&P was, I don't know if it did hit a new high, but it comes close. I never pay attention to that stuff, but you know, it's really close to all time highs. And then you kind of either hit it or get close and then they sell it off a little bit. So you kind of see this sort of action. This is XLI, which is just industrials, but it's, it's, it's a little like uncomfortable, you know, you'd like to see it bounce, but it's not abnormal at all. Okay. Like XME, again, these are materials. This, I'm not saying these sectors in particular, I'm just saying the chart pattern, you know, clearly out above the uh, summer highs, you know, big move, eh, pretty sloppy pullback in here, even started before the new year, you know, late at the end of, you know, right before New Year's, um, but still looks fine above the 25 day line. So I think, again, not to just, you know, repeat myself, but I think it's just a matter of, you know, hey, can we find some support here ish? I mean, I'm not saying we can't go down another day or two, but, you know, can we find some support here among the indexes and individual stocks? Um, and if we do, can we bounce strongly? Um, or are we bouncing strongly, but it's led by XLP and stuff like that? You know, we'll just have to see. So far, I would just give the benefit of the doubt to the trend, which remains up for major indexes, most sectors, and still the vast majority of stocks, 80, 85 percent of stocks are above their 50 day line. Just a couple more things until individual stocks. One is just playing into the XLV theme, which is why I'm always careful. XLV is kind of defensive, just like utilities are kind of defensive, obviously. But there's a little like other factors in play in utilities, it's interest rates. XLV, there is some, you know, medical biotech, there is some growth there. It's not just toilet paper and toothpaste, right? So this is XBI, which is biotechs. And I've talked about this before. It's been, this is XBI monthly chart. So back here was 2015. I don't know what level that was, call it 90. I mean, we're just about the same level as back then, you know? So at some point you'd think that, you know, biotechs would really lead. And, you know, it is, it is a nice, impressive trend here. And so far of all the sort of growthier areas, it's probably holding up the best. And I do have a couple names for you. But like, you know, we are seeing more of these names that have popped. There is some M&A stuff in there, some rumors. So that's helping the group. But even so, you know, there's, it's, 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 a, it's a pretty good setup. And there's some pretty good stories in there, too. And last thing I just want to mention was um, pretty much everything that was, you know, up strongly, meaning bonds or down strong. It's kind of reversed here in the first week. So this is interest rates. I do find today interesting. We had a jobs report. I don't really know the details. Don't ask me about that. But, you know, the interest rates have bounced, you know, pretty strongly here into the 25-day line. Okay, this, again, the downtrending in this case, 25-day line. Pretty big reversal today. Again, it's January. It's one day. I try not to get too close to things anyway on one day, but especially in January. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But I find that, you know, somewhat encouraging. Um, you can probably see it better. Maybe TLT is... Yeah, you can't see it quite as strongly there, but a little bit of reversal, you know, the five-year note, same sort of thing, it gapped up, 
big reversal so far today. So it, it's pretty good in terms of interest rates. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Now, in terms of individual stocks, simply put, it's just you're just kind of looking for relative strength in the short term. And for me, it's more about for the things you own, it's how things are pulling back. Um, but for things you don't own, it's also how things are pulling back. Are they holding up well? Are they respecting areas of support they're supposed to? So a lot of these look like, um, I don't want to say buyable pullbacks because that means go out and buy them. I just mean they look like reasonable pullbacks here. How you want to handle it is up to you. They could pull back further. It's safer, so to speak, if you want to wait for a pullback resumption. You know, you wait for it to just so you're not catching a falling knife. But I'm just going to show you some some interesting charts. Dave and Buster's I've mentioned before. Um, big picture, it still kind of has this 50 has been kind of a key level, which it's back to basically. Um, but obviously the recent action, pretty persistent in here. And so far sloppy, but you know, doesn't look bad. A little bit of volume this week, but looks pretty normal on that. It's a turnaround play, uh, but a lot of share buybacks and you know that sort of thing, big cash flow. So we'll see as the 25 day line approaches. Um, KKR is a classic bull market stock. Um, you know, good size, it's a $70 billion market cap. So it's not as big as like Blackstone, but it was definitely stronger on the weekly chart. You know, I mentioned it had, I think this was eight weeks up in a row. One, two, three, four. Yeah, eight weeks up, maybe seven weeks up. And now you're actually in kind of a third week of a tight consolidation in here. And it's kind of withstood the, you know, selling wave this week, hitting the 25 day line. All in all, I think that looks like a pretty nice consolidation. Uh, GoDaddy, this is sort of more of a cheap cash flow sort of play. Um, it's been just dead in the water, you can see for years. Um, really reacted well to earnings uh, a couple months ago and just ran with the market. Um, you know, it's not a dynamic performer usually, but it has had a pretty good run, obviously, above 100. And now it's pulling back, a little sloppy, but no big volume here, below the 25-day line. But again, overall, it's just kind of like, take take everything off the chart. You're just kind of, you know, it looks like this, basically. Okay, it looks pretty normal if it can find support so far. So GoDaddy was one. Um, Palo Alto, I don't know if this is really the number one leader in cybersecurity, but it is a very strong group over here, you can see. One cool thing about MarketSmith is they have um, the group RS ratings. So, and instead of giving you like sort of a decimal point sort of thing, it's just like A, B, C, D, F, you know, and this is A plus. It's one of the strongest groups in the market. Um, so Palo Alto had a clear breakout here uh, after a big shakeout on earnings, by the way. Um, and it ran, again, it's not the biggest leader, um, but it's been pulling back pretty normally. I mean, pretty grudgingly. Um, you'd like to see it again, find support. It's coming in toward you know support here, no volume selling. But again, I'm just seeing more of these sort of pullbacks, which are tedious, but not at this point abnormal. Okay. Now I'm not saying you you know I'm not saying you want to buy it down here. You'd like to see it find support and resume kind of where it's supposed to. But so far so good. Um, Novo Nordisk. So we've seen both NVO and LOI, which you know I probably shouldn't mention these. I mention these almost every week. But this one kind of uh, I'll call it a breakout. The RP line is still shy of its high, but Nice move on volume, two new price highs anyway this week. Um, Lily is not as strong, but is showing, it kind of reversed yesterday or whatever, but it's still showing some, you know, if you look at the weekly chart, which is kind of more important, it's it's starting to show signs that maybe it was playing possum in here and this tightness is gonna resume to the upside. Any of these companies might have some news coming out in the next couple of weeks. There's some industry conferences and whatnot, okay? Um, Pinterest, P-I-N-S. Um, this is one that was kind of a former, you know, pandemic winner, right? Got killed, bottomed out. We talked about it. And this is another one that kind of had, um, kind of like GoDaddy, but it had this big, big earnings reaction, huge weekly volume, biggest since late, since the bull market top, basically. Um, had a nice run higher, you know, pretty persistent. Here we go. Pretty persistent, even accelerating. And again, now it's pulled back. I mean, you know, 38 and a half to 35 and a half, you know, it's almost 10% in a few days. You know, it's not pleasant, but it looks fine. Starting to rally here. How you want to handle it's up to you. Again, no real volume, but looks like a pretty normal, regular pullback to this point. Okay. Um, VRT is a little different. Oh, excuse me. This is Vertiv. Um, listen, it's not, I've mentioned this before. I mean, the breakout was back here. It's not in the first inning, but sometimes these things can end explosively. And I'm not saying it's going to end, you know, next month or I don't know when it's going to end, but sometimes the end of the run is the best part, I guess is what I'm trying to say. 50 was round number resistance here, you can see up here, and it, it has sagged. So far, it's respecting the 50-day line. Frankly, it doesn't look like a bad risk reward here. Uh, it doesn't look like a bad risk reward if you just wanted to wait for it to go above 50. But so far, my point is, so far, 
it's just a normal kind of consolidation here. Doesn't look out of character at all for Vert. Uh, Wingstop, uh, you know, broke out back here. I think it was November 1st, the same day as the market. Obviously a very, very persistent, very solid run. Again, this is a good example. You know, you break out at 190. So call it, you went from 19 to 26, down to 24 in just a couple of days. Doesn't feel good, but doesn't look bad at all. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Like to see it find support here. Again, you come in next week, it's down here. I mean, maybe it bounces, but that doesn't look as quite as good. Um, but let's see, you'd like to see it find some support, but so far looks pretty normal. Um, Shopify is a little sloppier, but I would say that a lot of these, like the Datadogs and Cloudflare, some of the old winners, not like Pinterest, but they, some of these bigger cap ones, they kind of, um, they had this summer consolidation, hit new highs, pulled back here. Shopify's respected that prior uh, high here around, call it 70 bucks or so. It is bouncing. So overall, you know, like on the weekly chart, you know, it looks like it hit its 10 week line right here and is bouncing and isn't, I mean, I guess it's down 3% on the week, but looks pretty good. So Shopify is an interesting name. Um, home builders, I think look fine. You know, we talked about how rates did bump. I mean, today they're reversing lower, but they have bumped up maybe 30, you know, from the lows, 20 or 30 basis points, call it a quarter point, something like that. Um, but you can see here's DR Horton, but they, they all look pretty similar. This is DHI, you know, it obviously had this monster, you know, monster move here. But now it's been consolidating three weeks or so, pulled back near the 25 day line, just super tight. Of course, it was the end of the year, so low volatility. But even this week, I mean, it certainly doesn't look like they're selling it yet. You know what I mean? And volume's been very low. I guess there was one day here, but even that day was kind of support. So, you know, there's a lot of home builders that look pretty good. Could these things chill out further and let the moving averages catch up? Sure, of course it's possible. So again, how you want to handle it's up to you, but I'm just saying that the home builders to this point uh, you knew they were going to kind of take a breather uh, this after the sort of the Fed said we might cut rates next year. We're not going to raise rates anymore. Uh, but so far, they you know, they've they've really consolidated about as well as you could hope um, in terms of I mentioned biotech. So just a couple of names. This is ITCI. I've mentioned this before. Um, just a nice big base. Very, you know, sloppy. I mean, it's hard to hang on to these things. Right. They're kind of trading stocks all up and down, up and down. But change, change character recently, you mentioned this before, and again, you're just kind of getting this, you know, relatively sharp, I don't know sharp, but relatively, you know, 74 to 68 pullback here in a few days, not great, but obviously within the context of things looks normal. Uh, Neurocrine Biosciences was toying with this sort of 120 area for a while, um, and it just kind of ratcheted up. Some of this, again, there's some M&A stuff just in general for the group that is helping perception, um, not specific, I don't think it's specific to neurocrine as much as just, you know, hey, there could be more M&A activity in the sector. Totally acts well here. Hasn't pulled back at all. OK. Um, and last but not least, just some of these other names that kind of came off the bottom. I'll just mention here's Trip, Trip Advisor, um, some of these travel things. This has been the dog's dinner, but did bottom out. You're going to see a lot of these weekly buying bars in here. OK, pretty good earnings estimates. If these are for real, we'll see. I mean, in terms of this year, 40 percent. Um, and, you know, on the weekly chart, you can see it kind of dipped. It's my close three weeks tight. I mean, who knows how it closes, okay? And Expedia is kind of the, probably the stronger name in that group. Again, weekly chart sort of tells the story. Just a ton of buying. These four weeks to me are meaningful. I mean, you know, you get a big liquid stock. I mean, Expedia is not, it's a $20 billion market cap, which actually seems pretty small, but, you know, two and a half million shares at 150 bucks. So that's, somebody do that math, $350 million a day. So it's not small, you know, obviously in terms of liquidity, and you get these four huge volume weeks kind of after this big bottoming area. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's meaningful to me as a turnaround situation. And now you just kind of have these two weeks down pulling in toward the 10 week moving average on the daily chart. It's kind of toward the you know right into the 25 day line. So it looks pretty good. OK, so just back to the market again. I, I, I don't want to whistle past any graveyard like we've had a good run the last two years. We've seen a lot of times where the market goes up for six to eight weeks or less, you know, it might be four weeks, might be six weeks, might be eight weeks. And then the rug is totally pulled out in the past. It's usually been because of the Fed, right? The Fed says we're still going to raise rates or whatever. Um, but, you, you know, we'll see how it goes. So I'm not who knows. I mean, maybe this is going to be a peak and the market comes back in here and we futz around for a couple months. And, you know, I still think longer term we're in you know, pretty good shape. I haven't seen any warning signs there. But you can't be sure that something like that isn't coming. At the same time, you have to make a decision. Do you want to play with the odds or against the odds? 
And you can always find things to support your case. But right now, the trends are still up for the indexes, most sectors, most stocks. And the pullbacks we've seen, it would be one thing if the trend was up, like we're technically above the 50-day line, but you're seeing a bunch of stocks, you know, that did this for a couple, you know, three or four weeks and then had this huge volume decline. And, you know, okay, technically it's above its 50-day line, but doesn't look amazing. We're not really seeing that. We're really seeing kind of what the NASDAQ is, which is, you know, a very, very big run that got people excited. Pretty sharp decline, maybe some profit taking we'll see in terms of taxes into the new year. And now it's kind of like, let's see what happens from here. If we bottom from here and stocks, the indexes and leading stocks, not just the indexes, start to ramp higher, I actually think it could provide a lot of good entry points. But let's just take it day by day, week by week. Right now, still leading bullish, but we'll take it as it comes. Okay, that's all the time I have for today. Again, Happy New Year to everybody out there. And I'll see you again next week for another Cabot Weekly Review.